and Jamie Folsom. Love, love. So go ahead and have each of you sort of explain why you are diverse within skepticism, and then we can start out with some questions from the audience. So. Uh, I'm Logan Baxter, part of Rock Mountain Paranormal at MIB, and a high schooler at Brighton High School, which has like no skeptics whatsoever. <laughs> what about you? Do you need a microphone? Thank you. Does that work? <laughs> All right. I thought Pat was working to share microphones. Uh, my name is Joel Richmond, and I used to run uh, Mitch State Atheist down in Denver, Colorado. Um, I'm a faggot. You can smoke me later if you want. <laughs> um, or carry me and burn me, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but I'm here for that reason. I don't know of any other reason unless Ty wants to tell me the reason. I think that's it. Oh, just put the email in. Yeah. Alright, I'm Amy. Um, my theory is that I'm here because recently um, there's been some big debates over um, how to get more women um, involved in atheism and skepticism. And so Kai made me show up. <laughs> Appeal to authority. <laughs> I call shenanigans. <laughs> um, I'm Jamie Folsom, and I, I'm assuming, let's see. First of all, I'm on this panel because I'm a parent. And um, I also have a background in science education, journalism, uh, homeschooling, home birth. Uh, uh, many alternative uh, lifestyle choices, but I think there's a subtle uh, stream of tokenism going on here because obviously I am the only person on the panel who collects finger puppets. And I just want to make that <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. What kind of? No furry finger puppets. <laughs> <laughs> Questions for our diverse panel. I guess I know. Why does the fact that we're all white? She's part chocolate. Most of us are white. having a conversation with Chalmer here, and uh, I flippantly said, and jokingly, I said, I lost faith in the human race, and he looked at me and said, good, good idea. <laughs> yeah. I was saying, no, I was being, I, was, I didn't mean that literally, I've never had faith in the human race, so don't worry about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, there's probably something, if I delved into it a little more, I could probably find something, but at that point, once I found it, I would reject it and try to understand it in that sense, so. All right. Um, as far as faith, as long as it's um, removed from specific uh, religion, then uh, I, I agree with Logan that it is an essential part of human, um, the values of our lives. And my cultural background, my religious background, 
my um, understanding of faith uh, outside of religion uh, definitely informs uh, my life as a skeptic. It keeps me connected to other people um, without uh, some form of faith or a, a wonderment, as was mentioned earlier, in, in the I don't think I can appreciate the beauty and the value of things that I find through skeptical inquiry. So I have this question back here. I think I saw that hand first. Uh, yeah, I guess you you brought up uh, women and skepticism or women and atheism. Like, do you think that men are more inclined towards skepticism? Is that a problem? Do you have an explanation for that? I think it's easier for men to come out um, as atheists because women are more involved often in the community life and the family life and they have kids and it's not part of, they don't have a support network if they leave their faith, but men are far more able to be independent and leave that easier. Um, to that, this is actually, she mentioned earlier that it's kind of become a date now in our community. I've been to, I can't, I can't count, maybe it's about five conferences but put on by different organizations where this topic is a main topic of discussion. Like, it's not just something we talk about out in the uh, courtyard or whatever after a talk. Um, it's actually part of the conference where we decide, we, we make it an effort. Like, what is keeping women out of skepticism? What are we doing? It's not them, it's the problem. What are we doing to not let them in? What are we doing that's keeping them out? Maybe we have a lot to do to get them in. I mean, there's some here, awesome, you all rock. Um, but seriously, we need to do a lot more. It's on us, not them. We have we have to be that support network that she's talking about. Otherwise, they're not going to come out. Let's go down this question right here. I was reading my Freedom from Freedom from Religion Foundation newsletter yesterday, and I and I wish I brought it with me. But apparently, our <coughs> perception that that men are way ahead of women in the the skeptic camp may be founded, it, it looks like men now constitute uh, approximately 60% of church membership and women only 40%, which was very surprising for me to read that we said that they're a little more back up in the arts. I suspect that a lot of it is that men men have traditionally gotten a lot more support for speaking in public. If you listen to talk radio, it's probably 90% men. They like to shoot their mouths off. It's 90%. Right. <laughs> 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 Let's go down to this question right here. It pertains to uh, cultural and social applications and descriptions of the cultural warrior. What's your take on secular um, progressive versus traditional in application? Yeah, that was like the word right. What's your question? <laughs> what is your take on uh, its cultural application of being either skeptical or implementing laws and policies either on one side of a uh, cultural war, which would be the uh, traditionalists, the people who believe that the founding fathers wanted it to be just a bill around it, versus uh, secular progressive movements? The secular progressive movement would be something that would be um, like the ACLU or... So is the gist something along the lines of is it more effective to work on sort of a liberal side or, or a conservative no, no, side no, of it's things? Not, it's not a liberal or conservative uh, division. It's, a, <coughs> it's kind of like what makes culture run uh, more smoothly, would it be to have the some of the examples in the book were like um, having children not uh, have more authority over, like a parent she got um, a case was dropped because she was dropping on her child, and they said that that was violating her rights um, as a human or as an American citizen to have her parent use drop on her. In a traditionalist perspective would say that the parent has no rights or like sex education in schools or abortion. Well, as, as a uh, skeptic, um, I think that the parent's role is to teach critical thinking and basically teach the kid how to uh, 
figure out what's going on in the world and then have a rational and reasonable response to it. And I don't know like that it matters which take you're going. As long as you have the basic tools, then you'll find the path that works best. You know, I don't think that we have to put it into a should we be more um, conservative, traditional, or social progressive. I think it has to be what tools do you have and how do they apply to the situation, rather than creating a dichotomy where there doesn't have to be one. And that was secular progressive, not social. Go ahead and get this question back here. Um, I just wanted to point out that uh, I've been attending skeptic events for about since 2000. And uh, what is that, 10 years? Something like that. Um, in this room, we have 61 people and one third of women. So we've got 20 women, 41 men. So it's about a third. And I started, when I started going to skeptical events, I started going to CFI skeptical events, and that was probably 10% women. So we've made a Incredible improvement in that area. Now, if you look at the James Randi Foundation, the JREF Foundation, they're pretty close to um, like 35% uh, women. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of room still to improve for the women. And as you said, what is it that women, what are we doing wrong that we're not including the women? Well, I've never really felt any, um, what's the word for discrimination as a woman, not at all. But what I'd like to see, and this is something I've had this talk with Randi maybe four times, we need more color. We need more people of color, and that is what we need. Women, we, yeah, we're coming along, but we need a lot more diversity as far as color. And we have people who are, they're really starting to outreach more in the African American um, groups and, and other areas, but I think that's, I, I'm encouraged because these numbers look really good, at least for women, and we're at least talking about it, and we're having a panel to discuss uh, diversity. I think standards are improving, but come on, gotta hook it up a notch now. Okay, to be fair though, I want to say that earlier it, the owner was put on the men of skepticism to somehow make it friendlier or nicer or cuter and fluffier, more finger about this. Hey, that's you. Okay, no. That's you. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I, I believe the onus is on women. Yes. And people of color. And individuals, wherever you're coming from, whatever label you want to have, whatever uh, perspective you come, to see the value in critical thinking, to see that as the central thought of skepticism. And, um, you know, the, the skeptical movement as a PR mechanism has only just begun. I mean, we have Christopher Hitchens and Richard Dawkins representing a certain face of skepticism, but they're not the only face of skepticism. And critical thinking and, and skeptical inquiry is something that we as human beings, whatever society we live in, have access to. And there may be a lot of different barriers to that, but the onus is always on the individual to make that important and do something about it. They may not show up in this room. They may be busy out doing something twice as skeptical as any one of us in this room is doing right now. So, you know, I, I don't know. Two years ago, there weren't that many people, in, uh, women, in Denver. Um, and it was pretty apparent to me at that time, in that event, that the face was not a face that included me. So I kept showing up because then it did include me. To uh, the, one of the comments she made about including African American people of color in general, CFI actually started, um, actually Debbie Goddard, uh, the uh, on-campus outreach director, has actually started a program to do just that, which uh, we're, we're still waiting to see results. She's you know busy, she's only one woman, but uh, she is starting to do that, <clears throat> which I think is awesome. And this is, again, this is a topic that comes up all the time. What are we, not in the sense that we need to make it make the skeptical movement anything different than what it is, but like, what is going on in our organizations, what is going on in the organization of events and so on that's keeping them from coming? It's not a matter of changing anything, but what's keeping them from coming? We need to change that aspect of it, that's all. That's all I meant by that. Um, so, I mean. um, One more thing to add to that. I kind of wonder if these diversity panels and things like that almost 
make it more awkward for women to show up because all of a sudden it becomes a big deal that a woman is there rather than just being one of the community. I feel really weird being up here because I'm just a person, as it says on my name tag. <laughs> we don't have to divide into Self-identified person. <laughs> we don't have to divide into men, women, people of color, whatever. We have to learn how to be part of the community and get our message out